evening, Mason Nation, and welcome to the first broadcast for the fall 2014 semester of Mason Cable News. Today is Wednesday, September 24th. I'm Ashley Hill. And I'm Desmond Jordan. Well, it sure does feel wonderful to be back behind the news desk. For sure, for sure. A lot has happened at campus. Yes, lots of new changes here in the studio mm -hmm. itself. We have a new 30-minute segment, so be on the lookout for that. And on campus, a lot of things have happened, like the new provost mm -hmm. is finally here. I know we talked right. about a lot about that last semester. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cabrera yes. is in the new Merton Hall, not University yeah, Hall. Yeah, not University Hall. So definitely try to, like, throughout time, people will start getting that. I know I still get tripped up when I say University Hall. But um, also, we have a team of reporters that will be out in the field to deliver news to the Mason community. So be on the lookout for them as well. Well, the Society of Professional Journalists has been an industry leader for more than 100 years and is making its comeback to George Mason. It was established to improve and protect journalism, as well as a place for young journalists to come together and inspire one another. The official SPJ website is quoted that it both nationally and locally fights and wins battles for freedom of information and First Amendment rights that might not otherwise be fought at all. The official website for SPJ on Mason's campus states that this is an organization largely run by students that gives all the opportunity to pursue their interest in writing. It is also a way to get involved with leadership opportunities and an excellent place to establish networks with other people. Nick Stasiak, the president and founder of the SPJ at George Mason, is quoted saying SPJ is dedicated to encouraging the free practice of journalism. The organization works to inspire current and future journalists through professional development. Through workshops, guest speakers, conventions, and networking, the GMUSPJ chapter can open many doors for aspiring journalists. For more information on the Society of Professional Journalists at Mason, the next meeting will be held on Tuesday, September 30th. Two weeks ago, Counseling and Psychological Services brought the Send Silence Packing Campaign to George Mason University. Our own Robert Horan reports. With thousands of students attending class every day, there has never been a gathering of backpacks quite like this. This is the first year that Mason is hosting Send Silence Packing on our campus, and we were thrilled that we were able to bring it to Mason to kick off the national tour and on World um, Suicide Prevention Day to boot. So we, we were just thrilled to be able to be a part of that. There are 1,100 backpacks on display today, representing the number of college students that die by suicide each year in the United States. It started 2007 and then actually debuted on the National Mall. I'm um, gonna travel to over 80 cities I want to say um, and it's going on a tour right now of the southeast states. It's very sad I broke down and cried for a good 10 minutes earlier. Um, I think it's great that they're raising awareness about this though because a lot of people don't know and they suffer by themselves. It speaks a lot of volume to know that Mason cares enough to make it publicly known that suicide is a real issue. It's incredible. Like, it says so much with saying nothing. You just get to take it upon yourself. Like, it's their actual backpack. It's kind of like you're seeing a piece of their store. It's incredible. With the display of over 1,000 backpacks in North Plaza, Active Minds is trying to get one point across. Instead of being afraid to talk about mental health, this helps start the conversation so people do talk about mental health. The counseling center is available. Counseling and psychological services is 24-7 available to help when needed. Active Minds has been on North Plaza since 7 a.m. this morning, and since then, hundreds of students have walked by the exhibit. Some taking the time to read, while others taking a moment out of their busy schedule to reflect on the importance of the message. From North Plaza, Robert Horn, Mason Cable News. This was the first year that the Sense Silence Packing Campaign has come to the campus of George Mason. The campaign has visited over 80 cities and continues to raise awareness of suicide among college students. Two weekends ago, a pipe burst in Piedmont Hall, forcing students to evacuate the building and in some cases forced to relocate to other dorms. After the mishap, I was there to cover students coming together in this time of need. At Piedmont on Saturday morning around 6.30 a.m., a pipe burst on the fifth floor, flooding the entire building, leaving it in destruction and decay. Uh, the fire alarm goes off, and I didn't actually know that there was um, like a pipe burst until I go outside and there's like water leaking down the side of the building. The pipe burst caused students to vacate the building immediately, while some were lucky enough to return to the dorm only hours later with minimal damage. I couldn't come back for a while because they were 
the power was out for a lot of the day. I got to stay in my dorm, but the door was kind of open a crack because there were lots of uh, tubes and stuff in my room. And thankfully, my stuff wasn't damaged, but a lot of people's was on the fourth and fifth floors, and we had some damage here. Some are still displaced to the Mason Global Center. As for Piedmont, work is still being carried out to fix the damage within the building. They cut out portions of the wall and had, they had all these air blowers and dehumidifiers. Students at Piedmont are still trying to adjust to the hiccup that occurred this past weekend, whether it's their adjusting to the elevator being broken down or something more severe such as their damaged goods. Either way, we are Mason Nation and we are thriving together. Ashley Hill from Piedmont. Construction is still being done within Piedmont, but luckily for students, they can now safely return to their dorms. Campaigning season is upon the Mason community as student government anticipates a well-qualified pool of new senators to soon take their seat. Student government's tagline for this year is serving you in the needs of the Mason community. Additionally, for this specific election, the motto is want to say, here's your chance. The fall 2014 elections will commence at midnight on September 30th and conclude on October 1st at 11.59 p.m. Students will vote at Johnson Center kiosk, G and E, on designated afternoon times Voting can also be done via online, getconnected.gmu.edu. The official candidate list and ballot order of this year's elections can be found on the student government website, si.gmu.edu. There are a total of 36 candidates and only 10 candidates will receive the open 10 student senate seats. These senators will serve under Phil Abuscado, the student body president, and Delon Wickerma, the student body vice president. The official voting process is only one week away. It really is wonderful to see how involved students are getting with this year's election, especially freshmen. Yes, exactly. I see the campaign posters everywhere, mm -hmm. chalking. The chalk. Yeah. Yep. And they have a lot of good slogans this year. I was very impressed. Exactly. Well, the Green Machine welcomed alumni this past weekend with resounding notes that echoed throughout North Plaza. Alumni Weekend was held September 19th through the 21st to welcome George Mason's very own past graduates back on campus to reconnect with their alma mater. Various organizations and colleges within Mason held receptions such as the College of Humanity and Social Sciences annual Distinguished Alumni Reception and the annual Business Alumni Celebration where alumni were recognized for their distinguished honors, had the opportunity to reconnect with friends and celebrate their accomplishments. The weekend continued as the Green and Gold Bash was held serving decadent food while dining next to the statue of George Mason. The weekend slowly came to a close with various cultural events such as the Ice Cream Social, Broadway's Next Hit Musical, and Keyboard Conversations with Jeffrey Siegel. The alumni were given a melodic farewell as the nostalgic weekend ended with a grand piano celebration, alumni performance, and reception. We are nearing the end of the month of September, but one thing can never forget is the devastation that happened over 13 years ago. Here's a look at how Mason paid tribute. You and I'll be safe And that's why we all chose to gravitate, gravitate here tonight as a university community. To grieve, to respect, to remember, to never forget. This day will always be one that we choose as a nation and as a university community to continue to hold dear to our hearts. The day that we choose and will continue to choose, never forget. And then I think as we stand here today to remember the 2,977 casualties of the 9-11 tragedy, we should also take this time to mourn the many lives lost as a result of the subsequent war on terror. The best thing that you can do the best thing you can do when you confront such awful acts is to respond with, with goodness, is to respond with service. Today I've been moved by just seeing the, the incredible work all of you guys and, and coming together as a community. That's what good people do around the world. And that is the best thing that we can do to respond to what happened that day. To respond with goodness, with kindness, with service. We'll be right back. 
Uh, you're listening live to Improv for Mason here on WGMU Radio. Heard WGMU Radio. You know, it wasn't my idea. Today's show with our special guest interview. Transition for this team in the in the new conference. Well, welcome to a special edition it's been a, of the a first great pick. transition for me personally. I uh, love Mason. I the very talented David Keckner. I'm great. How are you doing? Well, Reed, Jonah, it was a pleasure having you on the show today. I did. I'm Ben Simpson. On the phone today, we have Drew McGarry, successful author, writer. You kind of... You're listening to WGMU Radio on WGMURadio.com. Hello, and welcome back to Mason Cable News. We bring you back with a controversial man spreading his voice across the Commonwealth of Virginia. The freedom of speech has reached its new heights here on campus as controversial Christian preacher Ross Jackson makes his appearance on North Plaza with a Bible and a gallon of water in hand. Jackson is the founder of Revival Mission Ministries, a religious group who focuses their attention on delivering their message to today's youth outside to gather a curious crowd. For the past couple of days, Jackson has succeeded in drawing attention to himself and infuriating Mason students through his discourse and judgment. Jackson speaks on the sin college students commit on a daily basis, some of which stereotypically include partaking in sexual relations before marriage, smoking, drinking alcohol, and masturbation. Mason students have consistently applied pressure on Jackson by forming a circular crowd around him that irritated Jackson substantially, and I quote, you all are a bunch of disrespectful hypocrites, end quote. Jackson proclaims as he repeatedly walked around North Plaza for a brief escape from the growing, insulted crowd of students. It is not known how much longer Jackson will impart his time here at Mason. Police have been present each day as a precautious security measure for upset spectators who may potentially react violently to Jackson's unpopular sermon. I'm sure many of you have seen videos on YouTube, and we want to know what you think. Please post on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash Mason Cable News, or tweet at us at Mason Cable News. Now we send it over to our new sports anchor, Sydney Peterson, for all of Mason's latest sporting news. Hello and welcome to the Mason Cable News Sports Report, and I am your host, Sydney Peterson. This past weekend, the women's volleyball team wrapped up their out-of-conference schedule with a tournament at St. Francis University. The team won two out of three games against Loyola, Maryland, and St. Francis before concluding with a loss against Morgan State. The team now stands at 4-9 and nine overall, 8th in the Atlantic 10, as they now head into conference play against Fordham this Friday. That game will start at 7 o'clock and be broadcasted live by Mason Cable Sports here on Mason Cable Network and online on the A-10 Digital Network. The women's soccer team had an off week weekend this past week, but with a 2-6 and six record, they will wrap up out-of-conference play on Saturday against George Washington. This matchup is considered an out-of-conference game, even with GW being a member in the A-10 because this matchup was set up while Mason was in the CAA. Finally, the men's soccer team will return home this week after tying Seton Hall at a score of 0 and defeating Long Island University by the score of 1-0. They now will host UMBC this Saturday as Mason now sits as the number 20 ranked team in the entire country. The game will start at 7 o'clock and will also be broadcasted live by Mason Cable Sports here on Mason Cable Network and on the online A10 Digital Network. The team currently is atop the Atlantic 10 standings with a 0-0-1 record and is one of two teams that remain unbeaten in the A10. During the 2013-2014 school year, Ike's was undergoing construction, resulting in Southside serving as the main dining hall for campus. The 2014-2015 school year came and students arrived to new changes regarding Mason Dining. Ike's was now open 24-7, Southside was closed on the weekends, Pilot House was considered a dining hall, and The Globe was the newest installment on campus. Some students expressed their opinions about these changes. While some were content, others were dissatisfied. MC News captured the views that students held in an opinion piece. Mason Dining's Mark Craner, the executive director for retail operations, saw the piece and wanted to respond to how the students reacted. We sat down with him and conducted an interview, getting the other side of the story. Students continued protests and voicing their opinions via social media. Shortly afterwards, Mason Dining released a statement with new changes led by the tagline, You Spoke, We Heard. The changes included Southside being open 24-7, Ike's operating on limited hours, and Pilot House restored to the a la carte style. 
Last season, the George Mason men's soccer team had a historical run in their inaugural season in an Atlantic 10. Earlier this season, at a home game against the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, they were recognized for their efforts. Tyler Byron reports. Please turn your attention to the track for this evening's ring ceremony where Director of Athletics Brad Edwards and Head Coach Greg Andrulis will present the 2013 team with their Atlantic 10 championship rings. This past Friday night, the George Mason men's soccer team got recognized for a feat that they accomplished almost 10 months ago. During halftime of the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee game, the George Mason Patriots received their 2013 Atlantic 10 championship ranks. Julio Arjona. The presentation of these rings was the final chapter in their historic 2013 campaign. And being just the first season in the Atlantic 10 Conference, Mason had a 5-0-3 record against conference opponents, earning them the number two seed in the conference championship tournament. After wins against St. Joseph's and PKs and VCU in overtime, they advanced the championship game to take on top seed St. Louis. Thanks to a goal in the 82nd minute by then-senior Alex Herrera, Mason would hold on to the 1-0 victory and become Atlantic 10 champions. The first A-10 Conference Championship in George Mason history. The Patriots go on to win the game against Wisconsin-Milwaukee by a score of 2 to nothing, And with another win against Hartwick on Sunday, they are now undefeated with a record of 5-0. The team is ranked number 18th in the entire country as they now try to repeat as Atlantic 10 Conference champions. Until next time, I'm Tyler Byram. See you next time, Mason. Lastly, we leave you with our 7-day forecast, courtesy from our news MCN News weatherman, Nick Stasiak. The weather really is... Dropping down in temperature. Fall really is coming. Yes, I have a 9 a.m. class, so I'm out of the room around 8.30, and it's definitely chilly. I almost brought my scarf and, like, beanie on. Like. That is one thing I'm really excited about, fall weather coming in. You know, like, the low 50s mm. um, is fall fashion, of course. Sweater weather. <laughs> Sweater weather and boots. Yes. Scarves, hats. I know you're excited. <laughs> <laughs> but the weather's supposed to warm up a little bit. It's like yes, the 80s this weekend. This weekend. Yeah. Yes. So something to look forward to. Well, that is all we have for you today. I'm Ashley Hill. And I'm Desmond Jordan. Have a great end of the week, Mason.